for one of basketball's greatest rivalries. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale, it's great to have you with us. Even with Wallace and Stackhouse, the great players inside at the beginning of the season, North Carolina looked vulnerable. Now with the balance and the outside shooting, I don't know. Hey, Mike, you know, you mentioned Wallace and Stackhouse. They're averaging about 40 points between them, the dynamic duo. But everybody was screaming, no depth. All I know is they're 16 and 1, and they would have been 17 and 0 if they had Dante Calabria against North Carolina State. They do a balance and three point shooting. Calabria is leading the nation. Six percent from three-point range when you can combine balance and great shooting you got a chance to win baby Duke is 0 and 7 in the ACC and Dick they look like they're a team that really doesn't believe they're going to win well Mike right now psychologically they need a W badly in the conference and what better way to get the juices flowing and to get your adrenaline going than to be one of America's best teams and your neighbor down the road they need a W here tonight psychologically Duke and North Carolina, two of the most successful programs in the history of college basketball. Ironic that they are separated by a mere eight miles of Carolina Pine. John Neighbor is the host of our greatest college rivalry series. He joins us tonight with more on the face-to-face -face meetings between these schools. John? Thanks a lot, Mike Dick. You know, as close as these schools are geographically, they see each other as poles apart. UNC, large public school, all their students hail predominantly from the state, go on to become leaders in the local establishment. Duke, small, private, recruits from out of state and boasts a lot about their academic standing. So depending on how you look at it, out on the hardwood is a bunch of rebel good old boys from the south or Yankee carpet baggers from the north. No surprise, it's a great rivalry. Students here at Duke many times erect tent villages outside the stadium two weeks before the game so that they're first in line to get those very rare and hard to find tickets in the student cheering section. Because it is such a great rivalry in the last 25 times these two teams have met, the series is almost tied. UNC leaves 13 to 12. Coach Dean Smith set all sorts of coaching records, but in this one category, he's batting under 500, and that's wins here at the Cameron Indoor Stadium. Can this game live up to some of the greats of the past? Well, you decide. In 1974, the day, March 2, Duke at North Carolina, Dean Smith had to lead his team from eight points back with only 17 seconds on the clock. They do inbounds the ball successfully the first time to their best foul shooter, which was smart on Duke's part. And yet their best foul shooter went down and missed, and we used our last timeout and knew we had to go the length of the floor. And it was really set for Bobby Jones to be a decoy to go long and for Walter to set the screen and go. And he could have had a shot, you know, like 20 feet. And that's where it was supposed to be. Instead, he came too wide and then lucked one in off the backboard. Kupchak will make the long front court pass. Gets it to Walter Davis. Two, one. Walter takes the shot. After Walter Davis tied the score in regulation, Carolina went on to win 96-92 in overtime. A funny thing happened uh, the next day in practice. I had to try that same shot, and he didn't draw iron. 9,314 on hand at Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for both ball clubs. For North Carolina, under Dean Smith, Jerry Stackhouse, Dante Calabria, Rasheed Wallace, Jeff McGinnis, and Donald Williams. It's going to be interesting, Mike, to see who they play on Stackhouse. Will it be Cherokee Parks? I think it will be. And if it is, I think Carolina will attack Parks. Pete Gaudet, the interim coach for Duke with Mike Krzyzewski, Ill, Cherokee Parks, Ricky Price, Eric Meek, Jeff Cable, and Trajan Langdon. Cherokee Parks has had a big year despite the team really struggling. He's been solid as a scorer and as a defender. The Cameron Crazies are up the first time Duke has been out of the national polls to play North Carolina in 11 years. Five times in the last decade, Duke has been number one in the nation. North Carolina can.
controls the ball and McGinnis with the basketball second in the ACC six assists a ball game Parks is playing Stockhouse back door to Williams and he just ran away from the defense Trajan Langdon left him 10 feet away lack of communication nobody guarded him Williams got an easy deuce and that's been one of the problems for Duke people have shot very well against them because their defense is not what it used to be and I really think that's a problem with young players making the transition to college Langdon got inside dumps it back out He can really stroke the jump shot. That's why he'll be an excellent power forward at the NBA level. He can step out and he can really tickle the twine. Duke in a very aggressive man to man. I would attack right now, Parks. I'd get the ball to Stackhouse and let him attack Parks. Nearly the steal. Capel got a hand on it. Like, I really think it's important, even though they're at home, they got to get a big lead. This crowd wants it badly. I mean, they're excited. They really know they need this psychologically. Their lack of confidence has been apparent during this 0-7 ACC stretch. Especially late in games. They don't believe, as you said earlier, that they could win down the stretch. Well, they blew a 40-19 lead against Virginia. That'll do it to you. I did that game. Capel with only two on the shot clock score. Where's the defense? It's like Madden. It is isn't there. It's unbelievable. Two easy layups. Excuse me, that may I call him Cable. It's McGinnis. Opposite fives. This is Capel. McGinnis is such a tough defensive player as well. He really plays the ball exceptionally well. And the North Carolina guards have really improved since the start of the season. Their shooting has been much better. Parks. Cleared by Wallace. Big time rebounder. North Carolina runs that sideline transition game. Love to shoot the three. Second in the nation at 44% from three point range. Stackhouse trying to take him one on one and blows right by Cherokee Park. I don't think Cherokee Stackhouse. can handle him because of quickness. I think he's too quick with his first step. 6 2 Carolina. McGinnis on Capel. McGinnis, a tremendous defensive player. Ricky Price. Strip knocked away by Calabria, picked up by McGinnis. Stackhouse out in transition. Oh, nice ball reversal. Donald Williams. That's the way you Donald swing the ball. Williams. You make the extra pass, you reverse it. Donald Williams made a big shot by when he beat Wake Forest late in that game. And Donald Williams has his shooting touch back, hitting more than 40% of his threes. It's 9 2, Carolina. Not the way to do these wanted to start this baby. Well, they needed a 9-2 lead. Exactly. Price has to throw it away. Tip by North Carolina. Peter 16 Gordet. on the shot clock. Coach Gordet taking over for Mike Krzyzewski. Has been assistant here for 12 years. Capel fouled on the way in by McGinnis. That'll be one on McGinnis. Your heart's got to go out to a guy like Peter Gordetti. He wakes all his life. He gets an opportunity here. What a tough pressure cooker. And they really miss that kid, Grant Hill. I'll tell you something. We talk about Grant Hill. He made everybody else better. His presence on the court. Parks can't hand the in, handle the inbounds pass and has to tip it out of bounds. The turnover gives it back to North Carolina. There's certain players you just can't replace, and Grant Hill is one of them. You look at this right now. Parks is playing off Stackhouse. He's going to make him shoot the perimeter shot. Wallace guarded by me. North Carolina really inverts their players, brings their big people out. Stackhouse got caught up in the air and ends up traveling. Good defense by Cherokee Parks that time. And Stackhouse may have been hit in the face. That's the one situation that could be a nightmare for North Carolina. They cannot afford to lose one of their starters. You saw what happened when they played without Calabria. There's the contact on Stackhouse. They played without Calabria against NC State. That was their only loss. Number 45, Serge Swicker. Stackhouse is going to get a rest. And Serge Swicker is going to check into the ball game for the first time. Hey, Stackhouse, little one-on-one -on -one maneuver. Oh, there's the reach oh, yeah. in right there. I believe it was... Was it Langdon that I think it or was. Poke in the eye. Capel has played well the last couple of games, but has his pocket picked here. Five on two break. Williams, another three. It's 12-2. What a big.
big time scorer. He had that big, big series when they won the national championship. They get a T.O. baby, and the Carolina fans go bananas. They're going wild down at the Dean Smith Center, too. They got a bunch down here, Mike. 12 2 Tar Heels. We'd like to welcome back our ESPN2 viewers and our ESPN viewers who join us now. It's 12 to 2 North Carolina. Let's check in with our host of great college rivalry series, John Neighbor. John? Thanks a lot, Mike. Sure, the guns are blazing for the Tar Heels, but you know, outside of their basketball program, they're also pretty proud of the graduates that hail from that university. Let's take a look at just a short list, if you will. Andy Griffith, Mayberry RFD fame. He's one from class of 49. Senator Sam Irvin presided over the Watergate hearings out of class of 17. Nancy Hogshead, a Duke graduate, gold medalist in 84, and the first woman elected to the Duke Athletic Hall of Fame. She also, I happen to know, is a very big Duke basketball fan. Back to you, Mike. All right, John, this is a crucial point in the game for Duke. I think they burned a timeout. They need to get a good play off this out of off this timeout. Pete Smith goes to a change defensively to the 2-3. Hey, Carolina's 5-5. Five for five. They haven't missed yet, Mike. They're on fire. What an outstanding starting five. And they play so well together. They're very selfish. They play as a unit. Langdon for three won't go. Langdon had a big, big spurt against Maryland. They took the they took the turps down to the buzzer. It was a two-point game. Chance to win at the end if it hadn't been for the block from Joe Smith. Wallace leaning in against Meek. They still haven't missed. It's 14 2. And they're 2 for 2 from three point range as well. They hurt you so many places on the floor. They have so many weapons. Five guys scored in double figures. Meek. Nice pass by Parks. Yes, good high low entry. Got it to Parks up on top. Fake the jump shot, dumped it down. And Meek with that strong move on the interior. I know it's really early, but Duke needs some defense, and that wasn't it. They ran a little back screen. They throw the diagonal pass. What execution North Carolina is getting. They're perfect right now. Their offensive efficiency is unbelievable. Well, perfect is unbelievable. They're like 7 for 7, right? It's incredible. 7 for 7. Lean in by Langdon. Nice shot for the freshman from Anchorage, Alaska. 16-6. 8 for 8 Hey, they're on a road. Can somebody tell them they're on a road? They're not supposed to be familiar with this place. Donald Williams has 10 points. Meek got his own rebound, and he's pushed. I'll tell you one thing about Eric Meek. You talk about heart. You talk about tenacity. He plays so hard. But what a special environment. This is the number one environment in all of college basketball. For those of us watching on ESPN, we'll return you to our studio. That foul was on Rashid Wallace, his first non-shooting foul. Wojciechowski checks in for the first time. Good ball handler, point guard, distributor. He sets the table. The joke is that Mike Krzyzewski wanted to sign him so he'd have somebody else's name is hard to pronounce. Or he can't spell. I name a fan out there. I think you said it wrong. I dare you to be able to spell Krzyzewski and Wojciechowski. Oh! Oh, oh they awesome tonight, baby, with a capital A. Yes, the mighty blue. The heels are on fire. Somebody call up the fire chief. Put out the fire. North Carolina has not missed a shot. Cherokee Park. Somebody that has to be frustrated. Mike. It's his senior year. He steps up into the number one option. Grand Hill moves on, and here they are, 0 and 7. But they're not 0 and 7 because of this guy. Look at him fighting. Look at him scrapping. Look at him clawing. But he puts it on the glass. And immediately, Dean Smith gets Wallace back to the bench with two personals. And Parks will try to complete the three-point play and does. but certainly doesn't have quality experience. When the other team is 10 for 10, it says something about your defense, doesn't it? Uh, or it says something about the other team's offense. Well, uh, maybe both. Combination. Calabria. Uh-oh, somebody missed. And the guy that missed is leading the nation in three-point shooting. 
Calabria hitting an incredible 60% from three-point range. Do you think they missed him a little bit against North Carolina State? Nine for ten, four for eight. Take a look at these percentages. You don't have to be a mathematical genius. I'm a dummy, Mike, and I know that's 90% and 50%. Last foul was on Wojciechowski trying to get the steal. Capel against Williams now in the man to man. Here's another three buried by Stackhouse. Stackhouse has really improved his range. One of the premier players in all of America. Averaging 20 points a game. And only four players since 78 have averaged 20 a game for Dean Smith. And I know one for sure. Langdon with a miss. The tip won't go by Meek. He still fights, but Stackhouse comes out with it. Stackhouse is like a man up on the glass. Look at the smart play by McGinnis. That's just intelligent basketball. Oh, look, look at that. Stackhouse foul on the way in, no basket. That's an NBA triple threat move. What a great first step. Hey, look at the guys, Mike. You talked about Phil Ford, tremendous point guard. Michael, the magnificent Brad Doherty, and Hubert Davis joined Jerry Stackhouse. Five guys under Dean Smith since 1971. Fouls on Cherokee Parks, pushing his first. Capel with a tough shot from the baseline. Parks with a rebound. Excuse me, McGinnis. Well, you got Capel and McGinnis. You're seeing fives. Both number five, both wear blue. And we got the worst seats in all of basketball. We're sitting tonight. I'm embarrassed to tell them we're sitting, Mike, the furthest corner of the right up on top. It's the oddest angle I've ever seen. Oh! Collins comes in. He has not played well, has not shot well, and throws that one away. I really think he got hurt by missing all that practice time because of the foot fracture, and that really hurt him. Okay. There we are. Hey. We're way up here, people. Look at us. Hey, somebody help. Hey, they can't. Well, Mike, where are we? Look at this. Oh, but you know what? I'd go. The eat. game's down there somewhere. This is the deuce, though, baby. This is the deuce. Four North Carolina. Or Duke turnovers one for Carolina. Tip won't go on the miss by Williams. And here come Duke. Duke really doesn't have a lot of athletic speed. Where they got guys that can run and jump. Ricky Price is one that can do that. The freshman, he hasn't really recovered from that ankle injury. Physically, he has, but he hasn't really recovered in terms of his game and his skills back again. Mentally, I really believe that set him back. The freshmen need all the time they can get, and with those uh, injuries, it doesn't help. It was the high low series. Meek against Swicker. Swicker with the defense and the rebound. That's a good effort by Swicker. Stack out. Play, Mike. Look at this, America. A reverse one hand oh. slam. I mean, was that Jordan is? Was that yes, it was. Jordan is. Jordan esque. Jordan esque. Oh, help me out, Mike. Jordan esque. Tell you what, it takes a lot of courage to make, mention okay, so anybody else's name with that of Michael know. Jordan, but he shows some flashes, doesn't he? He does show some flashes. 26 9, North Carolina over Duke. We're back, 11.33 left in the half. The score, 26 to 9. The Tar Heels lead the Blue Devils. I'm here with Herb Neubauer, who's the self-proclaimed number one fan of the Blue Devils. It's got to be pretty tough for you to watch. It's a tough night already, but we've dug ourselves a little hole and going to have to work hard to get out of it. Carolina's got a good team. Why is the North Carolina squad always the big rivalry of the year? Well, I think you got the two best schools around in college basketball, and they're so close together, and they're just both very competitive and want to be the best. Little story, you're a big collector. This is Coach K with his daughter, I'm sorry, Coach K's daughter, wearing your lucky hat. What happened to the hat? The hat uh, went up in smoke in a fire I had. I lost all my Duke memorabilia in December, and since then it's been tough sledding for this Duke team, but hopefully at night we're going to come back. Well, they might need a new hat right now. We'll go back to Mike and Dick. John, what does that say when your lucky hat burns up? Uh-oh. That's bad news. I demonstrated for John today my breaststroke. He said it wasn't too cool. State of basketball. <laughs> Collins. Been the story of his year. Cherokee Parks battling inside. And that's
that's been the story of his year. Tremendous effort. He has had a really outstanding senior campaign. Well, you can't hang any of the losing on Parks. He's been tremendous. Knocks this one away. All they're asking him to do, Mike, is go inside and get about 25 and guard Jerry Stackhouse. And not getting any more foul trouble. He has two. Collins, by the way, has hit six of 41 three-point shots. And he's such a better shooter than that. His confidence is so down. As a freshman, he hit nearly 44%. He was a great shooter. Comes from a great family. His dad, dog, mom, a great people. Nearly the steal. Good defense by Capel. Here comes the execution of Carolina. The hype screen, screen and roll, reverse the basketball, one-on-one -on -one up on top. Stackhouse misses one. Meek with a rebound. Swicker knocked Look at Swicker. Look at Swicker. Hey, he knows John Neighbors here, so he tried to show a little diving move. As Michelangelo Dean Smith won a few games in his career. Pulled out. Creeping ever closer to Adolf Rupp. He pulled out another magical one, as you've seen so many, as you told me today, driving over here. I mean, he was like down 10 late in the game against Wake Forest. I didn't think there was any way, Dick. He found a way. Capel with the double team. Great pass. Collins with a pump fake and drew the foul. Nice, smart play by Collins. They did a good job attacking the half court trap. North Carolina rotates into that trap, susceptible to a diagonal pass. Stackhouse picks up the personal, his first, the fourth on the team. You're going to not find better combinations than a Stackhouse and Wallace. You look at Corliss Williamson, certainly, and Scotty Thurman have the potential to be there. Marcus can be a pass for Lou Rowe. But these two really, really stand out big time. You know, the crowd here is really doing its part. They're hanging in there. Oh, they hung in here early in the evening. I mean, they were really fired up. They're trying to be the sixth man, but they need a little help from the team. 26-13, Carolina. I don't believe Carolina's capable of playing any better than they played in the first four minutes. I mean, they were just brilliant. Loose ball. Collins behind the back pass. Don't need that. Why do you throw a behind the back pass when you're trying to cut into a 13-point lead? Yeah, he doesn't need that. He knows it. There's no, one more, there's no one more embarrassed than Collins. There's Peter Goddard, former head coach at West Point, coached on the high school ranks. That's the fifth turnover against Duke. Great pass. Calabria lays it in. Calabria with that nice cut without the ball. Excuse me, that's Landry. Was that Landry? Oh, yeah, here's, here's Landry. Landry. People excuse us from where we're sitting. We are far, far away. Price back in the ball game goes to the baseline and hits the jumper. That's the kid that has to step it up. His dad told me tonight, tell those people out there, I think my son might be a little unhappy. Forget about it. He said he loves Duke. He's one of those guys that can get his own shot. Yeah, he's an athlete. He's a runner, a jumper. He's got great quickness. North Carolina moves so well without the basketball. They have a lot of motion. Got to run a down screen for Calabria. Shot clock at seven. They get us a little one-on-one -on -one look for penetration to dump it off. He does. Calabria caught in the lane. Had to force it up at the end. Wallace got it back. There's that reversal. Stackhouse for three. It's blocked. And that's great. Move from out of Canada with the block shot. Collins to Meek. Block. Knocked out of bounds. Out to Duke. Had a poor angle on that shot. Never was able to square his body and get a look at the glass. The National Hockey League continues on ESPN2 Saturday at 7.30. The 1994 Stanley Cup champion Islanders travel to Montreal to face off against the Canadiens. That's on the deuce Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Hope you'll join us for that one. What great talent in this league. When you think of individual talent, what about the job Travis Best has been doing since James Forrest is out? In the two wins by Georgia Tech, Mike, he has put 55 points on the board. Then you talk about a Randolph Childress, a Tim Duncan, talking to Billy Packard today. He absolutely loves Tim Duncan. He's only 18 years of age, and what a star he has become. You saw Joe Smith last night. Remarkable. Was he unreal? He had 21 rebounds, didn't 21 he? 21 boards. Wow. And 29 points. Yes. He is just a remarkable. 
remarkable player, and this league is loaded with him this year. Here's one of them, Rashid Wallace. When he gets ready to dunk the basketball, I'd get about 10 feet away. There's that 2 3 zone. What a great job Gary Williams has done to bring back his alma mater. It could happen to a nicer guy. 28 15, Capel tries to hit the three from the corner and can't. McGinnis, who has played so well for Carolina. Duke's got to get this down under 10 and a half time to have any kind of mental attitude to believe they can win. North Carolina getting some good minutes out of Swift. They just laid a nice horizontal screen. Calabria having a tough time getting rid of it. Williams with a running hook. The rebound to Greg Newton, the 6'11 sophomore. Newton playing with a lot of intensity. Capel left alone for the three. Meek, or excuse me, Kip the follow was Ricky Price, and it was kept alive by Parks. They're really waiting for Ricky Price to start to really step up and become what they think he can. He's got great bounce off the floor, played great against Connecticut earlier this year. 28-17, the lead's been cut to 11. Shows you how tough this conference is. Think about it. Duke is 0-7 in the ACC. Greg Newton got that last foul. That's his first. We have 7.47 to go first half. North Carolina by 11. Mike, this is the one young player as Carolina with that 11-point lead who I think has a chance to be a star. Ricky Price right here, number three. He's got the tremendous legs. He's got the great lift. He's explosive. An outstanding high school player. Some thought the best senior in high school last year in the state of California. I'd play him 35 minutes enough, but then again, I'm not coaching. I should look a little summary right here. Carolina shooting 65% after starting nine for nine. Duke has turned it over five times in this game. They try the backdoor lob to Wallace. Out of bounds to Duke. Duke did a great job defending that play. Rasheed a little upset with the call. They like it, the Dukies. And Duke has certainly played better defense in the last five, six minutes. Newton's been very active inside. Newton will take a 17-footer, won't hit it. He's under a little extra pressure, having a little problems academically, according to all the papers. His status is going up in front of a board, involving a possibility of a little problem with a, I guess it was a term paper. Look out. And fouled oh, by Newton. Rasheed Wallace with great inside position. There's no sense trying to block that. Your arm may go in the basket with the ball. There's the lob. He holds his ground, gets inside, jams it. I see so much of Alonzo Mourning and Wallace. Wallace has eight points. He's hit all four shots from the floor. 30 to 17. But he missed the free throw. Newton with that rebound. What was the status for Newton again? It involved the turnpaper, did it not? He was found guilty of academic dishonesty. Ooh, that wow. is being appealed. Wow, let's hope that that works out for him, but it didn't happen. Capel looking inside. Langdon. Oh, nice Marks. pass. Great look. Newton with the jam. He's playing hard, and Cherokee, the chief, delivers the rock to another big guy. Very unselfish play and sets Newton up for the layup. Duke has really picked up their game here. Is that defense? They gotta reach down, gotta have a little pride. Can't let them humiliate you on your own living room floor. Still, Carolina leads by 11. McGinnis, double team. Carolina usually attacks that double team well. They reverse the ball, get it away from the traps. Shot clock at five. McGinnis for three. Ricky Price missed him up the sideline. Capel missed him. Price tries to go baseline. Tough shot. Offensive foul on Price. Little one-on-one -on -one maneuver. Price on the wing. Jeff Capel's the guy, as you said, has been playing a lot better lately. He's had some big days shooting the basketball. He came on strong last year in a run to the national championship before being beaten by Arkansas. Newton gets a big hand as he goes out. Meek will come back in. He gets hugged. Played really well, Newton. Great effort. As Carolina runs their fame, pass 
possession game. Look down to the post and double up there, bring it back out. And Wallace throws it away wide of McGinnis, the fourth turnover for North Carolina. So Dick, after starting in a perfect mode where they could do no wrong, right now the lead is down to 11, and Duke has the ball again. And Duke has picked it up defensively. Rasheed Wallace coming up a great high school program. Simon Graff, 2 3 zone. Look for them a little trap out of this. Wing shot should be available on the wings against that 2 3. And Duke has some good outside shooters. Yeah, they really have shot the three pretty well this year. That's the one area they have done a pretty good job. Capel hasn't been able to buy one. This one's knocked away out to Carolina. Hey, how big is this game in the eyes of a lot of people? I was telling you, all the media guys are here. Larry Donald, Basketball Times, Dickie Weiss from out of the Daily News in New York, Skip Mislinski from out of Chicago, the Tribune, Mizell from out of Newsday in New York. I mean, they're all in town. This is a big one, baby. Even with Duke 0 and 7 in the ACC. It's still Duke in North Carolina. And nobody believes that team should be 0 and 7. I think people made an error. It should be 7 and 0. Stackhouse down the line. A lot of contact. No basket. Offense. Frank Scagliano with the call. That's two on Stackhouse. And Duke may have gotten a break on that one. We're going to look at Jerry Stackhouse. Here he is against Cherokee Barnes. Tries to beat him with the step. And there is the charge. Eric Meek with that good rotation comes over, takes the charge. Swicker comes back in as Stackhouse picks up his second. Rasheed Wallace also has two. There's Eric Meek. He rotated over, had both feet planted. Stackhouse up in the air. Swung the momentum even more. Well, Parks and Price, the one that Price missed wide open. Yeah. Number 22, Paris Landry returns. They miss Mike Krzyzewski, not to take anything away. He's the one kind of coach when you think about the Giants, the Bobby Knights, the Nolan Richardsons, John Thompsons, and all the super coaches. Take a look at the numbers here with Mike and with Al. 
They tell you the story, you look at the points per game. But in all fairness to Peter Gaudet, the competition got a little tougher playing in the ACC. Absolutely. Mike would be the first to say it. But he brings so many intangibles to the table. Stackhouse missed the one and one. Carolina has had trouble with Oh, that's a great pass. He should have hesitated. Hurts with the basket and the foul. Wojciechowski with the great bounce pass. He fed him perfectly down inside. This is the team hurting. Their fans are behind him. The cheerleaders are behind him. They're trying to get a little going here tonight. There's the bounce inside. There's the head fake. This is the kind of performance if they can pull out a W, we'll give them a spark. 12 points for Parks. I can't tell you how many times in my life I've done games from this building. <laughs> I've never heard it this loud, even when they had all the great teams. They can't get any louder than this. No. Can't get any louder. We're up high. They're rocking. They're shaking our boots. Shake it. I hope we're safe up here. Parks three point play gives him 13, cuts the lead to three. Wojciechowski has been of a spark, too. Got to play a little zone right now. A little matchup zone, too. Not playing their typical man to man. Shimon Williams and Pierce Landry, the backcourt with Williams. Got to attack them. They're inexperienced. Even though Landry's been around a little while, hasn't played a lot. Swickert nearly lost its shot clock. Six. Tipped out of bounds. Shot clock at five. North Carolina gets away from its five-man club. And its starting five, Dean Smith's basketball team is a different team. They become a good team as opposed to being a great team. Absolutely. Their starting five is sensational. Here's so well Landry together. kicks it off to Shimon Williams with one on the shot clock. Over the backboard, out to Duke. Dick, you're right. The team that Dean Smith has on the field right now, there's only two guys who are going to score for it. Exactly. And right now, Duke has got to take advantage. you got to credit these kids. I mean, these Flacco's, these 1,400 SATers are going bananas. They're letting out all their frustration over the year here today. Playing against the Blue from down at Chapel Hill. Got Meek in the low post. Parks running the baseline. What a college environment. Where's that 2-3 zone? I thought it was a Madison Square Garden. Nothing like this. This is college hoops, baby. Wojciechowski with a miss. Williams with a rebound. Donald Williams, the last 10 games, has played beautifully. Not forcing shots either. Taking good shots. Shimon Williams with a miss. Meek with another rebound. There's the young man who almost redshirted at the start of the year. He has seven rebounds tonight. Shimon Williams was recruited at the end by Kentucky with the fourth junior. Played some solid minutes against Clemson. Ricky Price. I can see his confidence starting to come back a little now. He knows he's got talent. They haven't seen the real Ricky Price the last two weeks here. It's a one-point game. The miss by Donald Williams and Price with a reach-in foul. Hey, Mike, I can't believe it. I have to tell the truth. I was getting all my filler material ready to roll, baby. I thought it was filler time. Dick, it was 26-9. to nine. <laughs> No way to believe that Duke, as poorly as they played and as with all the confidence they've lacked, would make any kind of a run. And yet here they are within one point. Guts, heart, desire, sense of pride, not quitting. They're playing an outstanding team down the road who's given a superb effort as well. Pierce Landry has given this club some quality minutes this year. The 5 8 Kappa from Greensboro. Great student. He can really stroke the ball as well. He's a product of that JV program where Roy Williams got his chance. He played yeah. 10 years. A lot of schools don't have a program where they give an assistant a top chance to call timeouts. And Roy is now one of the giants at Kansas and coaches. Landry makes them both. The lead is back to three with a minute 15 left in the half. I'll tell you, whatever the lead is from this moment on, if you're Peter Gaudet, you got to be proud of the way these kids battled back. Patience and poise here, but here's the skip pass. Capel for three. That was just great, won't go for it. That was a great pass by Parks. Right over the top of the defense, the skip pass. The zone slides if you make that pass to the guy next to you. Capel has had some good looks tonight. He's a very streaky shooter. Is that really Landry? Landry 
He comes up short in the lane, but has the presence of mind to tip it back outside to McGinnis. The one thing happening for Dean Smith that's a positive. He's getting some minutes out of guys like Williams and Landry to rest his starters for that second half. They're playing a lot of minutes this year. North Carolina has gone the last seven minutes without a field goal. They'll play for the last shot. And can you believe it? They knocked down their first nine. You know, Mike, you think of their starters. Their starters, what is Carolina? Tremendous comeback by the Blue Devils to cut it to five at halftime. Let's get down to John Neighbor. John, this is some atmosphere, isn't it? No question about it. I'm down here, and I can honestly say Dick Vitale is not loud enough because of the noise that's going on on the floor when we come back during halftime. Some more footage of other great games between these two rivalry teams. Welcome back. Second half action. Duke leads by three. I'm standing next to Jerry Stackhouse's half brother, Thomas Dawson. And Tom, did you play with your brother early in high school? And did he show that kind of flair back then? Oh yeah, back then, you know, Jerry was always been a. I, I've not, never been the player that he is now. I, I, I probably could shoot a little better, but jump like him ain't no way. <laughs> is Jerry the kind of player who will stay at UNC for four years, or is he going to go pro soon? And that's something I don't know. That's a decision he'll have to, have to make for himself. What do you want him to do? <laughs> well, enjoy the rest of the game. Great rivalry here, folks. Let's take a look. All right, John, thanks. 14. I think we can just barely see the edge of the scoreboard. 14-39? Looks like 14-39. All right. You get a nosebleed up here. We're up in a catbird seat up here. But it's fun. This is fun city. This has been a tremendously well-played basketball game. Especially the second half, it's been really the best I've seen thus far this year in terms of the environment, intensity, execution, shooting, war movement. Collins for three! Hey, that's what they need. Everybody is feeling it. It becomes contagious. When one guy steps it up, everybody else steps it up. If they get Chris Collins shooting that way, they become so much more dangerous. As a freshman, he was draining. Duke has done a pretty good job all year shooting a three. Not certainly as well as North Carolina. We're looking at it tonight. Four for four in the second half after one for two. Ten. Remember this. North Carolina's second in the nation shooting the threes. 44% for the year. Duke's biggest lead, 52-46. What a weapon, that three-point shot. You're not going to survive without it today. McGinnis tries a tough pass. Here's Langdon back the other way. in the world on that drive. And he needs that mentally, psychologically as a player. He needs a lift. And there he is with that drive, lays it on a glass, very simple. His dad was absolutely sensational. The last foul was on Trajan Langdon, his second, the sixth team foul. And Wallace goes to the line, a 61% shooter. Even though Carolina's free throw numbers are still down, you can see they're getting better, especially in the second half they shoot better. Especially late in the game, Mike. They got great technique right there. You see Wallace. He's got perfect mechanics. 54-48, 13-42 to go. One thing that's happened here tonight, Duke has shut down the three-point shot of Dante Calabria. He's been extremely quiet. Leads the nation in three-point shooting. He's not quiet. In fact, they were up 23 in the second half. 
on Virginia. Dick, we were talking during a timeout. If Duke can win this game, it would give them such tremendous confidence boost. But if they play like this and end up losing to North Carolina, this could be devastating, especially coming off the game against uh, Maryland. Maryland, you lose two back-to-back -back like that. You know, you want no moral victories. You don't want a handshake tonight and say, you know what? Great effort, guys. You played with a lot of heart. You were down 17. This is your living room floor. I'll tell you something, though. We really have seen the character of these kids tonight. Ricky Price comes in for Langdon, who goes to the bench for a breather with 14 points. And he has been on fire in the second half. He has spotted up really well. Made a great drive. Wallace makes it 57 to 50. Rashid with 16 big ones. North Carolina can get a little fatigued right here, too, in terms of it's hot in this arena. Play those starters a lot of minutes. He's got Pierce Landry on the floor right now trying to get one of the starters. And Ricky Price buries one. I just can't believe that he has not been a better player than he has been. I know he had the ankle injury, but I saw a Mike give against Connecticut, and you could just see the special talent he possesses. Maybe tonight is the night. Could be the coming out party. The labor it just can't get a shot. The place is right up in his face. That's one of the great strengths of North Carolina shooting the three. Nice drive by Stackhouse. The foul will be on Newton. That's his fourth. And Duke getting into some foul trouble inside. Four on Newton. Mink went to the bench with three. They rotate three big players. There's Stackhouse. So tough to handle him. He's got the great body control. An exceptional driver. Kansas does a great job rotating three big people with Pollard, LaFrentz, Ostertag. Pete Gaudet will sit Newton down with his fourth foul at the 12-34 mark. And Meek will come back in to play with his three. I know Mr. K got to be watching. He's got to be proud. This is Duke of old playing with intensity, feeling and confidence. He had the three freshmen, Mike, after their loss to Maryland. He had the three freshmen at his house. And very rarely, according to people, talked about basketball. They were there watching the Super Bowl, the conversation. Mike is a people guy. Stackhouse misses the second shot. He has 15 points. You can, see the, to you can see even the bounce by Price. He's got so much confidence. Collins. Meek kept it alive, but the rebound snatched down by Stackhouse. Got great hands. Calabria with a runner. That's only his second field goal tonight. And he shows that I can also go to the basket. If you're going to take away my jump shot, I'm going to drive. And he has not had a chance to shoot a three-pointer. He's the best in the country. Mike, you're right. I've been here so many times. This crowd is so explosive tonight. Tonight, they have really stepped it up trying to support their people. You look at Dante Calabria. His dad played in Iowa years ago. Under 12 minutes to go. We'll be back to Durham in a moment. Is it to make... Six to nine, and it looked for all the world like they would blow Duke out of their own building. Field goes shooting second half. Duke starting the second half the way Carolina started the first. 12 for 15, really on fire. Executing. Look at this right here. Look what's at stake right now. Unbelievable. They haven't lost four straight to UNC since 1984. Four straight at home since 76, 77. Oh, hey, I know that lady, Mike. I know that redhead. The lovely Lorraine Vital. Oh, wow. Who, uh, spending all these years for you, we have decided to nominate her for sainthood. You got to do that, Mike. 23 years with me, living with a wacko like me on the road all the time. She has to be special. 11:51. Speaking of special, this game has been just that. And that's, and that's not overselling it either. Uh -huh. no, has been remarkable. Shot clock at seven. Here's a holding foul away from the ball. It's going to be on Pierce Landry. Foul on North Carolina. North is really susceptible to being really taken when they go to that bench. They are limited in their personnel. Pat Sullivan would have been such a player for this team. Parks had the three. Good ball movement. Capel. Jeff Capel's got to step it up here. Give a little help to Langdon and Collins, who really gave him a great lift. First two for Jeff Capel, who averages 11.9. And he's averaged over 16 in ACC game. Three-pointer by Landry. Big shot for Carolina. We want to welcome our ES. 
ESPN viewers, you have joined us in the middle of a superb game. 61-56 Duke, 11 minutes to go in the game. What a gutty comeback you missed here by the kids from Duke. A lot of character. They were down 17 early, but had no quit. Parks for three. It's an air ball. Seven. Look at this. They're enjoying it. What an absolutely great, great night so far here. Donald Williams gets the personal, his first, only the team's third in the second half. I can't believe it, Mike. We are drenched. We are sweating. It's a sauna up here in the Catbird seat. But this has been so worth it. Both clubs have really played superbly here in the second half. Collins, an 83% free throw shooter, missed the end of the three point. Little two-man game, Swicker and McGinnis. Tough pass by McGinnis for Swicker to handle. Parks, get it over to Capel. He's got to get going a little bit.
could play anywhere for me, I'll anywhere tell you. you Pat Sullivan, we talked about earlier, had that back surgery. He would have been such a key player for North Carolina, would have given him an extra quality role player. Missed the second shot. Well, Jahowski, with, excuse me, Langdon with a rebound. Two factors why Duke is winning right now. One, they've been able to negate the great three-point shooting of North Carolina. Super big people in this league. When you think of Joe Smith and Tim Duncan, who's only 18 years of age, Wallace, three big time players in the sophomore class. They need to throw on veterans like Cherokee Parks. Get it into Eric Meek, who may be playing the best game I've ever seen him play. Carolina throws it away, though. That's only the first turnover for Duke. Open up the That's an excellent call right there. Duke gets it with the extra. Ball on a charge by Stackhouse. Dick, we have seen the Duke players drawing fouls tonight. That's one of the things they haven't been able to do all year. And that's position defense. That means they're hustling to the spot. They're moving their feet. We take a look at it right here, Mike. 7.56 left to go in the game. The lead is Duke led it 68-56, returning the favor after Duke came back when they were down 26-9 at the start of the game. And they've really created havoc with the pressure defensively. Here they are now, face guarded. On it for the lob up front. Stackhouse trying to get back on Parks. Parks releases and gets the layup. Cherokee has 20. Against the full court pressure. Excellent maneuver by Duke. And that came out of a timeout. Goes into his zone right now, out of the timeout as well. With a little matchup, two three. Calabria for his first three of the night, and it ties it. Can't zone them. You cannot zone them. They got too many open shooters. Very difficult to zone this basketball team. Mike. The country's top three-point shooter had missed his first two. Had not looked good, but he buried that one to tie us at 76. Back after this. Tied at 76 with 346 to go. John Neighbor, have you ever seen anything like this? Never once in my life. I got to admit, I haven't been to many men's college games since I got out of school. But those seats that those students were waiting for two weeks for, they're not using them. They're and, on their feet the whole time. <laughs> hey, John, you're having such a great time down here. That means you're not going to take your check, right? Because you don't want any money for this. This is fun. <laughs> I'm having a ball. Call up your friends, people. We got a dandy. Seven games in a row, Duke has lost in the conference. They have not had a 10 loss season. I'm learning something. 24 and 10 at 84. North Carolina in the last six minutes on a 20 to 8 run, capped by Donna Calabria's three point. And they've done it with their defense. Their defense has been outstanding in their traps, creating a lot of. You got to spread the court. They've got to get the ball to Cherokee Parks. He hasn't touched it down low forever. Little screen and roll right here between Meek and Price. Reverse and dump it in now. Dump it to Parks. He had good inside position, but they never looked inside. Shot clock at 13. Play a little two-man game. Parks and Campbell, let your, let your leaders take over. Absolutely erupt the pandemonium of Duke. 
for to win this game. If they do, I'm glad we're up here. Oh, wow. Isn't it been fun just to be here? There's a double screen. Baseline double screen. North Carolina reacted well to it. Again, Parks unable to touch the ball in about the last six minutes. Here's a diaper dandy. Wojciechowski, a freshman up on top. Picked up his dribble. Oh, nice reversal. Three-pointer by Rebound by Stack. You see a big time rebound. He's got the great hands. He really attacks the basketball. So many weapons, North Carolina. On his holding side. Yes, sir. Good call. Excellent call by Frank Scagliano. And Eric Meek has fouled out of the ballgame for the fifth time this year. Yeah, he really was working inside against Wallace and made contact. What a super night for Meek. They ought to give him a standing ovation. His effort tonight. His enthusiasm, his energy, played with great enthusiasm. He's pleading his case to Frank Scagley. Too late. Too late. He's trying to be a lawyer. He's trying to be a lawyer. It's too late right now. Got to go to the sideline. 11 points, 10 rebounds. Tremendous night. A lot of hustle for Eric Meek. So Newton will come back out with four fouls. Listen to him. Yes, sir. He gets a standing ovation. It's a hug for Newton. Says, you know, we can't lose now. We gotta maintain this. We gotta win. At the line for the car, yeah. Wallace goes to the line where he is four out of five tonight. 22 points. It's Bielak's time. If you're Peter, get that right now. You haven't been through it as much as a Dean Smith. That stomach is churning. It is absolutely clawed. His nails. He's biting his nails. Look at this. 80 percent of the line tonight. And in a most hostile environment at that. I think they really relish coming here now. I really do. I think it's like so exciting to be able to get in the bus and go eight miles down the road and play here. Tied at 79. Calabria tries to save it but threw it off of Stackhouse. These programs have such respect for each other. And this man, you talk about a Hall of Famer with class. Oh, wait a minute. The ball's going to Carolina. Must, somebody must have reached a hand in for Duke to touch it. Sir, he got it off Newton's knee. Heck of a play by Calabria. Calabria makes little things like that. That's what leads to getting to the victory. Tied at 79. You gotta attack Newton right now, don't you? Would Wallace take advantage of his experience? I would think so. I'd go and start it out for him. I'd go to Wallace. I would go to Wallace. I'd say, Rasheed, take me home, big fella. Take me home. Take me home, big fella.
so good and so prepared that things go your way all the time. That isn't luck. Not all the time. There's a saying, Mike, you use it on a motivational tour and speaking. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. If one is prepared for the opportunity, they take advantage of it. And that's been the history of Tar Heel basketball because the man sitting right there, Michelangelo, has been a genius through his career in getting his people to believe they can win. All right, there's 46 seconds on the game clock, 27 on the shot clock. How far down do you take it? Do you take the first good shot you have? I think you take the first good shot if it's a real good shot, but you certainly don't want to run it down to its entirety. Oh, my God, I mean, it's unbelievable, the situation. Two huge swings in this game. Remember, North Carolina started with a 26-9 lead. Duke came back, went out to their own big lead, and now North Carolina has come back to catch and pass them. Well, North Carolina right now is certainly going to use that clock. McGinnis guarded by Wojciechowski. They're in no hurry. Marks is on Wallace. With the lead now, you're not going to take just the first open shot. You're going to use time. You're going to take time off that clock. Shot clock at five. Stackhouse. Whoa, oh, what a loss. Calabria got it back and shot it. There's a foul. They got a foul here. Foul on Stackhouse. We got 15 ticks on the clock. And I wonder why Calabria takes that shot. Exactly. You know, Exactly, don't need the shot. Right here is change of direction. That's a great block by Parks. What a finish. It's Calabria. He does not have to shoot that ball. And there's the cut. Wow. What contact? They call the contact on Stackhouse, put Parks on the line. Where? Where did you see that? I don't know. Also, on Rasheed Wallace, and that's his fifth. Mike, we're so high up here in the Catbird seat. I mean, I couldn't tell what happened in that sequence. Parks will go to the line. I didn't see a foul on Parks. I can tell you that, but the bottom line, he is there. Number 45, Curtis Schlicker. He said two out of two from the line. 20 points for Cherokee Parks. If he makes the move, it's tied. With 19 seconds left. I think Calabria didn't need to shoot that basketball. If he it, brings it out, yeah, Duke has to foul. Duke has to foul. Now, if you, Duke, if you can get some out, it's even overtime. With Rashid out of the game, got an advantage. 78% free throw shooter is Cherokee Park. Two things you got to be careful of if you're Duke. Certainly, North Carolina is going to take it right down to the like the last three or four seconds, and then hope if the miss to get an offensive rebound. Williams, the much late game shooter, and you gotta watch Jerry Stackhouse on the offensive board. Tied at 81. You gotta watch Stackhouse with the missed shot, but you gotta be careful. Donald Williams wants the ball late in the game. He's got a freshman playing of Langdon. Eight seconds. Penetration, spinning away. McGinnis. was a yeah. little push, but yeah. it was a long time between if that happened and the whistle. That had to happen, Mike. That was probably the call, because Rashid didn't even really, he didn't moan and groan about it that much either. And you don't have to really hit somebody hard in the back either. An official right. sees you push in the back, he calls it. Duke, three of five overtime wins against Carolina. Jump and they'll up. jump this one again. I'll 
tell you, you're Duke right now if you think of that. You're thinking of 0 7. You're thinking of the double OT loss at home to Virginia. And you say, can it just go our way one time? The other thing you're thinking, wouldn't this be sweet? Now you got to think about Parks and Swicker. You got to think about the experience and go to Cherokee. Parks for three. Swicker with a rebound. If Mike Krzyzewski is watching this game, I'll bet the adrenaline has almost cured his back. I hope it does cure him. We got to get him back in the arena. Stackhouse lost it on the way.
hits the three. He has 25. The lead cut to six, but there's only 124 to go in overtime. And right now, Carolina is in command. We are on. We're in overtime, and Durham, North Carolina, 124 to go, 9084 North Carolina. A lot of individual stars tonight. Some people have really stepped up big. Let's take a look at some of the individual scoring. Wallace, who's fouled out at Stackhouse, have 25. Parks has 25. Langdon has come through with 14 for Duke. And right now, the Blue Devils have to play some defense. Well, the difference here in the overtime has been decision making. Really making solid decisions with each possession. North Carolina has excelled in that area, getting high percentage shots. Duke has really struggled. Duke gets an F. They really do. The decisions they've made. Yeah, the they last get an effort. Last couple of trips, I, without a doubt. Hey, we're going to play right now. Dr. Patrick. <laughs> professor Patrick. <laughs> yeah, you're a professor. The prof. Stackhouse double team. Yeah, they spread the court. They're trying to eliminate the double up. Get some good spacing. McGinnis gets it to Williams. Only 114 to go in the game. Got to think about fouling. You can't just play around here. Let him take so much time down. You got to think about fouling. Trade three for two. They're 16 and 1, North Carolina. Chance to be 17 and 1. One loss over in Wolfpack Country. Played without one of their starters. Dean Smith using his offensive defensive substitutions. Swicker comes in. Williams goes out. Landry goes to the line. North Carolina with a win tonight with Ty Maryland at 7 and 1. Maryland's only loss was to North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And Gary Williams keeps running back and forth to the kitchen. He keeps looking at the score. He says, come on, Dukies, help us out a little. Gary has a great basketball team up there and a great player in Joe Smith and a lot of other guys who can really play this game. Yeah, they really do. They're not just a one-man team. No, they sir. They're very good. athletic. They play together. Simpkins and Booth and Rhodes and that whole gang. 92-84. Duke needs threes, and Capel can't afford to take his time. A screen and step back. Parks is shooting. And they call timeout with 29 seconds to go. You know, years ago, several years ago, you called a timeout because you want to stop the clock. The clock stops in the last minute of the game. The people say, well, why the timeout? The timeout is to be able to set up the defense, to go into a defensive alignment. Dick, I really think it was a mistake for Duke to let that almost the entire 35-second shot clock I agree. run off on that last possession. Oh, without a doubt. No doubt about that. That was just poor judgment there. Also poor judgment offensively early in the overtime where North Carolina had exceptional judgment with the play by Donald Williams, the play by Calabria into Stackhouse. Of course, this is something you might expect out of a team like North Carolina and a young team like Duke making those kind of decisions. Exactly. But think of about Heartbreak Hotel. They lose tonight, Mike, they're 0 and 8. Think of double overtime loss to Virginia. Overtime loss possibly here. Two-pointer to Maryland. I mean, it's unbelievable. Listen. Duke has got to go for the foul, and they do capable immediately with 28 seconds to go. You got to really reach out to the Carolina kids. I mean, they could have folded here late in this game, but that's not part of their game. And there's a look at Peter Gaudet and his staff, Michael Gray, Tommy Amaker. I told Tommy Amaker before the game, I said, you guys just got to hang in there. Everybody knows you know what you're doing. Exactly. I mean, all three guys have a solid basketball background. This guy has a solid background, too. Calabria hits the first. He's three for three from the line. Dante with ten points. I don't know about fatigue, Mike, but I'm fatigued right now. And I haven't played. I'm drenched. I'm so. I'm up here in the catbird seat, and these kids must be so exhausted. Williams comes back in 93-86. It is a three-possession game, and look at Carolina on the line with a free throw. Oh, it's an unbelievable night here tonight. 
painful. But it's not screen. Kick it back out to the screener. The three hits for Langdon. Only 16 seconds to go. Trajan has 17 points tonight. And the foul on Price. Some of the young kids at Duke do really have talent. You think of Ricky Price and Langdon. They're going to be really solid players ultimately. The bottom line is, though, they lose guys like Parks and Meeks. Meek, and that's not going to be easy to replace. I thought you made a great point earlier. As hard and as well as Cherokee Parks has played all year, you have to feel for him that he's not getting the support around him. He's so used to winning, so acclimated to getting into the winner's circle. And all the success they've had here at Duke. Five points for McGinnis, his first free throw. Big assist night for Jeff McGinnis. He has 10 coming off a career high 13 against Florida State. You know, you mentioned Cherokee Parks. I know his stock has gone up, up, and up with a lot of NBA people from where it was in the past. This crowd deserves a hand, too, Mike. They were unbelievable here today. This crowd down the lane, basket counts, and the foul. Mistake by Landry to yeah, step you, in. You don't want that foul right there. Now, if you're Duke, you got to get into a real tough defensive alignment and try to force a turnover like Carolina did. There's the foul. Carolina against Wake Forest. They forced the turnover on the inbounds of the basketball. It's exactly the same situation we have. If Cable can make the free throw, it cuts it to three. Five second turnover. That's and then you sell out on the inbounds play. Absolutely. You lock up on every guy on the floor. Capel with 13 points, four out of four from the stripe. Five out of five. Now they have to get the steal. You lock up. You got a face guard. Oh, they did a great job there. Posted they up. foul Swicker with four seconds to go. Remember, a three point shot. If he can miss the free throws, they get a foul. shot and look at the goal. And Surge is one of the guys you'd look to foul. A 61% free throw shooter who doesn't play off it as an in a pressure situation like this. I think this crowd to be applauded and saluted. Their effort tonight, the crowd, has been fantastic. Let's salute the Dukies. Let's salute these kids. Couldn't agree with you more. It is a two-shot foul. Swicker, who has seven rebounds tonight, has not scored. If he makes either one, one it's, it's over. over. He makes one, it's history. But if he doesn't, we got a shot for a, another OT. And I want another OT. I wouldn't mind. seconds left if you miss the free throw I mean all you can do is take and throw it down court right well basically remember this Mike the clock doesn't start people until the ball touches the hand of a player I think the timeout now I, I think the timeout now starts in a situation where they get a chance right now Duke to set up a shot the clock does not well, start no, we get the one free throw left oh yeah stood up free right oh yeah so if he misses, all oh, you can do is toss it. Oh, yeah. Oh, if he misses the free throw, you got to grab the ball. Exactly. You're talking about the miss. I thought you meant the main. I'm no. sorry. The heat has got to be. The heat has got to be. I no, if know. he makes it, it doesn't it's matter what doesn't they matter. do. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Boy, this, this is going to be a heartbreaker, especially for Duke, if they lose this one. The way they have played tonight, being 0-7 in the conference and all the other oh. things that have gone around this team. But what a win it would be for Carolina. Incredible. The fact that they can win two in a row, on a row. So the scenario again right here. Mike is active. Number one, if he makes the free throw, it's academic. Because there's no way that Duke can win. You'd have to come up with a genius play of somehow, a dumb play of following the three-point shooter. And this would be a miss. The clock starts going, and it could be very, very difficult to get a good look. This would be the fourth straight win for Carolina in the series. The fourth straight loss for Duke at home. Number 15, Jamal Williams back in for the car. Haven't said that in a decade. That's incredible. So Swicker goes back to the line. See what Duke is doing? They're putting two guys on the wing. If I'm North Carolina, I match up with those two guys and don't give them a good look if Parks grabs this rebound. See, North Carolina, you got to match up on the wings. You don't want the ball to be thrown over the top. Collins capable. There's the miss. Missed right? it. You got the they look. got a chance. He lets it fly.
times. He took a bad shot. He didn't make good decisions. But they'll forgive him for anything. Watch this one more time. Here he goes. Oh, how sweet it is. The running one hand though. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Tickle the twine, Mr. Capel. Jeff Capel has 17 points. That's his second three-pointer.
Coach Smith says, you know what, Rasheed? I don't need another assistant coach. I need a player. Why don't you foul out? 22 for Donald Williams. He's saying if you didn't foul out, we'd probably be home with a W by now. Well, there's a double stack down low. And a pop somebody out off the double stack to the baseline. There it is. Possession here. Parks for three.